we are live. Yeah. Friday yeah. again. <laughs> it is Friday. <laughs> um, morning, everybody. I'm, I'm going to kind of take the lead on this because, Chris, you're not feeling very well. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to start with this, have you recovered from Glastonbury? But clearly Glastonbury's uh, been the end of you. <laughs> well, Glastonbury was okay. I, I came out of Glastonbury feeling relatively fresh. I think it was the Katie's that uh, that polished me off on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, but uh, great event. And, um, yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to reset reset before next week. But yeah, yeah. please do take the lead and, and, <laughs> and take control today, as usual, Cara. I will. <laughs> um, so this week we are, well, it's Alcohol Awareness Week this week. Um, and we wanted to focus on that for uh, this discussion today. And the theme this year for um, Alcohol uh, Awareness Week is alcohol harm, um, which can relate to a few uh, different things. And I'll panel today is uh, will share their thoughts and experiences and um, so joining us today um, we've got Christian Sharp he's a chef um, and has spoken out previously about his struggle with addiction and his recovery journey um, and you've been in recovery since November 2021 um, and you know thank you so much for coming on and, and being honest and sharing sharing with us for the next half an hour so we're looking forward to to speaking to you um, and also uh, Camille Vidal, founder of La Maison Wellness and creator of Mindful Cocktails. Um, she was a bartender and is a no and low alcohol drink expert. Um, as she has already mentioned to me today, I've had a good dig around in her social media to find out a bit more about her. Um, but yes, really excited to talk to you, Camille. I think perfect for this, for this week's discussion. Um, so let's go straight into the theme. Uh, this year's Alcohol Wellness Awareness Week theme, um, alcohol harm. It's intended to challenge the stereotype that alcohol is an individual's problem. Is that something that any of you have come across um, in terms of people's mindset? Who would like to go first? <laughs> Sorry, can you just repeat the question? Yeah, of course. So um, they're trying to challenge the stereotype that alcohol is an individual person's problem. Um, and I just wondered, is that something that you've come across um, of people's mindset that they think, you know, whoever's got the issues with alcohol, it's their problem and nobody else's? Well, yeah, I, absolutely. You go ahead, Christian. I think I think that eventually it is, realistically, it is the, the, person, the person's problem, but it's also like, um, you know, you, you can't really get out of it alone. You know, it, it's to, to, to people have to come together to be able to, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to do it on your own, you know, but it is, it's, it's, it's a combination of, of, of their problem and, and their past realistically, that their past is what has, has, has created the problem. And it's not necessarily it's their problem to deal with now, but it wasn't necessarily their problem to begin with. Okay. Okay. Camille? Yeah, I think that there is even so much to unpack in that very simple question. First of all, how do we define a problem? I think that often we identify having a problem with alcohol, with something that is, you know, alcohol, um, usage disorder which would be like what we picture as like someone who's not able to really function or get on with their life you know poor vodka on their conflicts but actually i think that we can say that alcohol consumption for me in society is very much the the casual drinker the everyday life you know the socializing i think alcohol is so embedded in our society that what we call call you know the the gray area drinker for me a problem is as soon as like alcohol gets in the way of you being able to live your life to its full potential that's when it becomes a problem i also think that like yes it's individual but actually i think that the the, the problem is how alcohol is embedded in society how it's you know promoted and glamorized and so much part of the way that we think we have to socialize we have to celebrate you know you're having a good day you should have a drink you're having a bad day you should definitely have a drink and that narrative for me is the source and the root of the problem um from its beginning really so 
So just to jump in, I think it's such an interesting like conversational point because you know there is that cultural element and society element. We have um, a Ukrainian girl who works for us, and she says she never really drank much alcohol until she came over to the UK because they didn't. You would have drinks with food rather than having drinks for the sake of it from the social element. So there is that cultural point, but there's also, as, as Christian says, the personal point in terms of what's happened to you in the past what might be going on in your life currently where you might develop a dependency on things like alcohol for example but then also there's the cultural element of hospitality which teaches you that actually alcohol is a way of decompressing at the end of a busy shift or service and that the access and the ease of access to alcohol is also there so there is almost like a shared responsibility for this is the understanding that people may have issues within their life that that may lead them towards using alcohol as well as the cultural norms but understanding that in environments where well 99 100 percent of environments will serve alcohol there has to be that sort of shared responsibility rather than putting it all on the individual right yeah absolutely and i think that like it's beyond that it's a symptoms of some of roots that is way deeper than this but also in our society alcohol is shown as a way to escape numb self-medicate soothe you know and it's acceptable and in some cases it's actually almost celebrated you know and i think that's why there's so much to unpack and to debunk in our relationship with alcohol and why why I think that Alcohol Awareness Week is an amazing opportunity to maybe take a moment to look into what is our relationship with alcohol. You know, I think a lot of people have actually never really looked into it, question it, challenge the narrative, you know, see, you know, what their relationship is with alcohol right now, what it's been in the past, what role does it play in their life, how do they use it? And I think asking ourselves this question to really fully become aware and then to have this insight to be able to empower ourselves is really important in finding our balance when it comes to, to alcohol. I think as like um, within, within hospitality, when it comes down to it, it's like if you, once you start developing a problem with alcohol, you know, you'll find any reason under the sun to justify while you're while you're drinking it like it's it's like okay yeah it was a bad shift okay yeah it was a great shift or maybe there was someone else from the industry that's coming for dinner and they bought a crate of beer in do you know what I mean to, to say thanks for their for their meal or whatever it will be is like for me it didn't it didn't really i didn't really i needed to feel like i needed to justify it because pe else people would start asking questions but then you have to justify it to keep people off your back you know because you don't of, often want people to know the real pain that you're actually in you know and 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 that for me it's like i just yeah it was it's almost like keeping those barriers up around you to push people back away from them realizing actually how you feel inside uh, so you justify it and make up excuses to why i'm gonna have a drink tonight or why i'm gonna you know oh, i've got a day off so i'm gonna have a drink of course i'm gonna have a drink it's my day off you know but you know not everyone knows that i'm getting a can of stella from the fridge as soon as i've woken up you know and that's the hiding the alcohol from people is is um it's the the lies and the manipulation that is when the problem starts to sneak in yeah i i also think if i mean that's very spot on what you're saying christian i think that there is also an element of this is our way to um, connect to socialize in our industry you know we this is so um intrinsic with what we do and there is this sense of like belonging i think that there is 
an incredible um, community and sense of connection between, you know, in hospitality industry, but the way that we connect, the way that we socialize, the way that we get together is very often also involving alcohol. And I think that even though it has been shifting over the, the years and, you know, I, I mean, I was, I've been in the industry for almost 20 years now and I've really seen a shift in the last few years of like a desire for, for people to find a better balance. But there's also a bit of a, of a, um, of a negative, you know, impact and effect of people, um, in, you know, inviting each other to drink more and to be like, oh, go on, let's have one drink one more, or this is my day off and let's go and get drunk. And, and I think this has actually on the long run has a negative impact on the individual, but also on our community and on our industry, because I really don't think that if you want to be successful in this industry, you can't wake up with a hangover every day. That's just not um, possible, but that's also not it's also impossible in terms of longevity. And as we grow as you know, industry professional, and we want to remain in this industry and not burn out and make it you know, um, a happy and sustainable career, we have to be conscious of that. We have to be to find balance. I mean, I was a global ambassador for almost a decade, and that's very much where my journey as a as a mindful drinker started, because even though it's not, you know, it may have sound like the the dream job and it was in in some in some ways because i was traveling around the world talking about the art of their the aperitif bouncing from one cocktail bar to another one restaurant to another but the intensity of that job on my body and my mind was so intense you know i was really struggling to find days where i could not imbibe alcohol the the amount of you know even though i was in overindulging or I wasn't binge drinking but I was constantly drinking because <clears throat> I was working with an alcohol brain and I was you know hosting events and going to visit accounts and all of that the jet lag the pressure that it put on my body was was too much and I think that is really where I started to look into ways of being able to find this balance to make this this job more long, like more into um, more sustainable in terms of longevity because otherwise I would just like it was just burning the candles at both both hands and so I think that perhaps there is also real conversation and that's why we're here and I love what you you guys are doing to be had in what can we do as an industry to put in place those better coping mechanisms those better ways of you know celebrating in our society so we don't have to burn out we don't have to have amazing talents that come in this industry but also leave this industry because they just can't sustain sustain it and i think that's really important conversation to have and also i always take the example of like pretty sure that doctors don't pop pills every single day i mean some of them may you know i never know but like it's not because we work in an industry that involve alcohol that we have to um, abuse it and overindulge it yeah such an interesting interesting point that just because we are surrounded by it doesn't necessarily mean we have to partake one of the big starting starting conversations i had recently was with a college um a college cohort that we did some training with and one of the questions at the end of the session was from a young young chef and he said i don't want to drink alcohol after a shift but i feel like i have to because i feel like i won't be accepted within the brigade i feel like i'll be outcast he said so how can i pretend to drink alcohol but not drink alcohol and I was like, oh, my God, like if this is the future of, of our sector and they're already worrying about their relationship with alcohol, what can we do to change that narrative? And I, I mean, I, I was a bit stuck because I said to him, well, you can drink no alcohol, you know, zero percent. You can switch to low ABV. You can, you know, perhaps it even involves going to the gym afterwards. He said, yeah, but I'll be on my own with that and I was very confident I said to him like ultimately if you start doing that you'll be surprised at how many people start to break away from that cycle and start to join you but it does require that confidence it requires that that maverick behavior to go and set that president and do it for the first time and that's a, that's a lot to ask of a young a young newcomer to the industry right but don't you think that there's almost the responsibility maybe of the venues to take part in this and actually to um in like you know to install those better rituals like i mean um i 
spend a lot of time living in Melbourne and I have so much time and so much love for the, the industry and the community there. And some of the amazing bars and talented bartenders started to offer alcohol-free beer and to recommend and, and, um, and really show the way of like having an alcohol-free beer at the end of the shift instead of drinking alcohol. And it becomes a ritual and it becomes part of the culture. And I think that's a real positive change. And so I love that awareness from this young chef that is already so aware and so, so conscious of it. But I, I hate the fact that he feels alone in this. And I would love more bars and restaurants to offer, you know, alcohol-free alternative at the end of the shift, activities, define ways to do team building that doesn't involve drinking alcohol, and all this positive change that can be part of like a shift in the culture in different companies rather than just an individual trying to make a change and feeling like they're being, you know, alone and outcasted because again, it's like, I mean, as human being, all we want to do is feel like that we belong, you know, we want to be part of the pack. And how can we make this sense of belonging in this community a more positive um, impact, you know, and, on how we, we socialize and how we do it? It's a really interesting point, isn't it? Because I, I do think it is definitely a cultural thing. And when you say, oh, I'm not drinking, instantly people are like, why? Why aren't you drinking? Just have one. Just just have one, just leave your car, just stay here. And it's just, and you feel this instant pressure of, uh -oh, but I don't, I don't want one. <laughs> but we're just so conditioned that it's like, oh, that's strange, why are you not drinking? Like, well, it's not strange, I just don't want one. There's a really interesting, interesting point. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to bring us back to the the theme for, um, which is the alcohol harm. And it's it's kind of, they've, the line that they've got on that is is that it's um it's the role um and that when alcohol is having a negative effect on our lives or the lives of those around us so however small that might be and christian i just wanted to bring you back into the conversation is that and talk to you about you know the impact that your relationship with alcohol had with people around you right and sometimes people don't realize that negativity do they no i i think that um you don't real really real really know the the impact of the harm that you're causing around you until you're uh like face to face with the problem you know it, it, until because i just thought when i was drinking i just thought it was normal um i didn't i didn't know any of i didn't know any other way you know i didn't know any other way to get through a day um and so i thought it was normal um i got brought up in 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 a in that kind of culture of of you know you in the pub at the weekend at, even as a young kid you know my parents would go to the pub at the weekend or on a friday night or or that and so i thought it was normal to go to the pub after work you know but and it is, it is in some aspects of life. It is normal to go to the pub after work, but it's it's not normal to drink the excess amount of alcohol when I was getting home from the pub as well. You know, that's what the difference. You know, it doesn't. It and and the harm that it caused around me was that all of my friends and family, one by one, started dropping away by the wayside. You know. Um, I di I didn't have a relationship with my sister. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't know my my niece's name. I didn't know her birthday. You know, I I very rarely speak to my family back in Cornwall when I lived in London. Um, you know, I I ha but then again, you, you I caused all this harm to those around me, and and realistically. I had to lose everything. I had to lose all of that before I realised that, you know, things are bad. You know, I, I wasn't. If things didn't get as bad as they did, then I'd still be drinking today. You know, it's. I had to lose everything, and 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 the most important thing is the, you know, the beauty of recovery is that 
I'm able to make amends. You know, it didn't end up, you know, I didn't end up dead. And, 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 and I'm, I'm very, very fortunate about that. And uh, because, you know, that's where it would have ended up. And, and, and that's, that would have been a lot more harm than, than, than what I put them through. You know, it, it affected, you know, my mum, it, it affected my mum probably quite bad. Me and the relationship with my mum is still an ongoing process um, and it always will be. But it's like, you know, how, how many times did she ask me if I was OK? Uh, and and my answer was always, I'm fine, I'm fine and I'm fine. You know, and and when I visit Cornwall, um, when I lived in London and realistically, I she would drop me off at the train station and and I just couldn't wait to get on that train just so I could have another drink. You know, that's, you know, that's the pain that I put them through is that I was never present in anyone's life. You know, visiting, visiting Cornwall or them visiting the alcohol ran my day to day life for over 14 years, I would say. But like from the moment I started drinking, it, it became a problem quite quickly. And and I it basically ran my life of getting and using and, and finding finding ways to get more for, for over 10 years. You know, it was at the forefront of my mind. And so that meant I was never present for any of my family. None of my colleagues, they were never you know, I, I can all my priority on my in my day to day life was how can I get out of this place earlier? You know, and, and I, I, I'm not that shy to speak about it, but it was also how can I get out after lunch service so I can get to the shop to get my drinks for the way home? Can I go to the pub for a couple in my like after lunch? then go back to dinner you know it, it was I it harmed everyone within within you know that was close to me because the only like the image that I gave across was leave me alone you know just do your job and let's get out of here so I can go and being at work, being in day-to-day -day life was so painful. The only thing that was going to make me feel better was a drink. And so if that was to have a drink before work, to get me through to after lunch, to have another drink, to get me through to the end of dinner, that's what I would have to do. Because, it, because being in my own skin was so uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, so so to feel like that, that meant that everyone else had to come last, and 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 you know I was unbelievably selfish. And thank you so much for sharing that, because I'm sure that there'll be a, a large number of people who resonate massively with that, and it takes a lot of strength and courage to be able to speak openly about that. So honestly, I. Yeah, it's fully appreciated. I, I guess you mentioned at the very beginning you had to hit rock bottom in order to be able to get recovery. Is that something, Camille, that you think um, should happen or has to happen in order for people to be able to identify their relationship with alcohol before they get help? That's a very good question. And, uh, and Christian, thank you so much for, for sharing. And what a beautiful, um, you know, outcome of like being able to realize and as you said you know that you you got to that moment when it was i'm either gonna die or i'm gonna find my way through and save my life and that's so inspiring and uh, and incredible and um, that you did um i think that like there's so many different paths um 
when it comes to in, in so many different degrees and and different levels when it comes to alcohol consumption and and there is that path where christian you will more associate with which is the recovery path which is very much you know getting on on that journey of sobriety to be able to save your life i think that there is loads of steps before that where my the job that I do is hopefully to prevent people from hitting rock bottom. I want to be able to, you know, help our industry to not get there, but also every individual of being able to to become aware, to understand um, their usage of alcohol. What what are they trying to numb? What are they trying to escape? What are they trying to to hide away from before they hit rock bottom? And I always say. You don't have to hit rock button to change your relationship with alcohol and to become a mindful drinker. And I actually think that like this is really validating for people because a lot of people won't do anything, won't change anything because they wait for that moment to hit rock button and they will say, well, I'm not that bad. This is not that bad. You know, I don't drink in the middle of the day. I don't feel like that I need to go and get a drink to, to get through. But I, I actually, I think that alcohol... Um, is problem alcohol consumption is problematic way before that and again for me it becomes a problem as soon as it gets in the way of you being able to live your life to its full potential it becomes a problem where in when it's holding you back when it's getting in the way of you being able to achieve your dreams and your goals when you don't have the motivation when you wake up the day after because you've got even just a bit of a cloudy head because it's disturbing your sleep and we know that even the smallest amount of alcohol will disturb your sleep when it's you know keeping our relationship with other on a bit of a su superficial level because we don't have deep and meaningful relationship because we remember half of our nights when we go out be because we don't live our life feeling our authentic self and therefore we can't really thrive you know and i think for me that is a very much more casual alcohol consumption because again if we go back to what we were saying at the beginning of the conversation alcohol is so embedded in our society celebrating in our society a way to self-medicate to self-soothe to help with loneliness and to help us feeling more social and all the things that we're using it with and i'm not saying that no one should drink alcohol but I'm saying that everyone should be aware of our relationship with alcohol and find the balance that works for themselves. For some people, that means sobriety. And very often I say, if one drink is never enough, you shouldn't have any. But for some people, that means moderation. And that moderation, again, will change from one individual to another. For, for me, I think that moderation, for, for someone, I think the low and the no, the low and no options are are great for, for people that can moderate. Um, they're, they're a great um, alternative. But for someone like myself and, and, and other people like me, for me, I think that it can all, all it can prolong the problem. Um, for, I, like, for, personally, I don't, I don't go anywhere near them like the the the, the alcohol free alternatives because it associates me with alcohol and so for someone like me that has a problem with that you're best off just getting to a stage where it's horrendously painful so you think well i should probably do something about this you know you're you're best off trying to not get to the not get to rock bottom because i'm not saying that that's like uh uh there's there's no fast track to rock bottom you know there's definitely no fast track you have to go through it all but like you can also like because when i first tried to stop drinking yeah i went to to alcohol free bit you know but um, funnily enough it doesn't do the same thing you know so eventually all I ended up do, doing was drinking again. You know, I had to completely surrender to, to say, no, I'm not going to associate myself with anything to do with alcohol. Mm. It's so interesting that you say that, Kristen, because 
um, if we look at like the, the numbers, actually, I think it's something like over 90%, like 93% of the people that drink alcohol-free alternative still drink alcohol. And I think that's exactly what you're saying, because for people like you that are very much on this, you know, recovery, deep recovery path, there's something that is highly triggering and that for you, it's better to move away from alcohol completely and and learn how to live your life without having this in your life because realistically you weren't drinking for the ritual you were very much drinking for the effect of alcohol you know and i think for some people that are consuming more for the ritual of it for that moment to just unwind and relax a bit i actually think that those alcohol-free alternatives can be an amazing replacement for them because, you know, I always say keep the ritual, update the recipe. And again, it doesn't apply to everyone. And I, and I really hear your story. But for the people that are more on that moderation path, then that's a, that's a great way to be able to celebrate. I also yeah. think that, like, moderation is actually probably harder to, to find than sobriety because if you decide to cut it out of your life you make a conscious decision and this is out the you know the the finding your balance and being in and out or yeah i can have one but i can't have two like this is this is really hard this is not an easy pass and it's definitely not one for everybody and again it's going through that journey of understanding yourself of doing that deeper work because when you remove alcohol you actually learn to feel your emotion, to connect to that. And that's really, really helpful to be able to know what is the best balance for you. Yeah. Camille, in the years that you've been obviously doing what you're doing, have you noticed a shift in, in society? Have you noticed that people are looking to drink less? Is it a generation thing? I know people younger than younger than me, alcohol isn't so much of a, a presence for them when they they meet up with friends like they're all quite happy to to not drink alcohol and so is it a shift that you're that you're noticing yeah absolutely i mean we've seen like um huge shift in in society and numbers are fascinating you know 74 percent of the population in the uk is actively currently uh, moderating putting strategies and tactics in place to mod to moderate we see that younger generation gen z is drinking less than any previous generation before and actually when um being asked 30 percent of gen z have said that they enjoy the feeling that you experience after a workout more than the feeling of being tipsy which i found you know fascinating so we really really see, see a shift but we also see that like actually moderation is the biggest part of the population you know 19 percent of the population in the UK is teetotal when 74% is moderating. And out of those 74%, there's actually 56% of people that are still saying that they want to drink less alcohol. So potentially in that moderation, there's also people that are really struggling to moderate and really struggling to find their balance. But what we see is a real, real shift towards more moderation, towards more you know, health conscious um, choices and decision um which which i think is you know a positive shift in our drinking culture for sure it it's a great opportunity for me to mention a conversation i had yesterday so for um some people may know uh ian lay who is um an incredible fundraiser for us who has decided to do a 50k ultra um mm -hmm. We were having a conversation yesterday, and he started up uh, a, um, a burn chef running club for people. But it's going to be a post-service uh, running club where no matter what your age or your ability is, rather than you sitting behind afterwards and having uh, a beer or a wine, uh, you put on a pair of trainers and you go for a plod around uh, route with, well, initially starting in London, Ian, but we'd like to try and replicate this around the world. And so um, it's a really great way of being able to demonstrate that there are initiatives now. There are ways of being able to swap those habits and replace it with the, you know, the buzz of of serotonin and and having that exercise. And then also the the thing about exercise, right, is when you do exercise afterwards, your brain isn't going, oh yeah, I could really do with a beer now. It's going, don't want to put toxins in your body because you've just done all that hard work and and now you should be able to benefit from it long term so um 
yeah, initiatives like that we need to be able to promote openly and be able to get encourage people more to be able to get part of. I don't know. Is going to say something? I wasn't sure if you were. Yeah, no, I, 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 I love this. <laughs> I love this, and I agree. I think that there's more and more, and I and I can't wait to see more and more happening. And I think that by having this conversation, we actually, you know, hopefully encouraging people to start their own initiative. We giving them the the courage to say, well, actually, this, you know, I'm not the only one feeling that way. I think that's a really important mm -hmm. message. Like, if you feel like that you that alcohol is getting in the way and that you want to shift things and that you want to change it, know that, like, most of the population feel the same way. So you're not alone and there's absolutely a way to do it. And this is what I do with my Mindful Drinking program, which is an online six-week course where I help people to change their relationship with alcohol. And, and I hope and I hope that like there's more and more amazing initiative like you just mentioned so we can start swapping you know those habits and uh, and having a, a positive impact on the, on our industry and ourselves yeah. i was gonna say christian do you have some last things that you would like to say to anyone watching this maybe it's someone that's kind of been where you were um and you know has that had that relationship with with alcohol yeah i mean to be honest i think if you if you if you're looking towards alcohol on a regular basis and you start looking at more towards the percentage rather than the taste then because for me i never drank alcohol on taste i drank alcohol on the percentage you know how how, how am i going to get to a, a state of of blacking out or intoxicated as fast as i can you know that that was that was the goal you know, at the, for, for in it, and that was, you know, ev every day of, of how can I get to that, that stage of, you know, it, for me, it was, even when um, I used to put on, you know, I'd have to pick what mask I put on when I left the house every day. And, uh, you know, I used to be, I used to be proud of, the days I used to be proud of how many days that I hadn't consumed. Like I, I would know. Okay, I, you know, I would never know the last day that I didn't have an alcoholic drink. You know, that's how. That's, you know, so it was, and it was always to, to get to that state of, you know, intoxicated, you know, not knowing home, not knowing how I got home, you know. Where's this? Where you know it's always a a panic in the morning to try and find all your stuff to then do it all again. You know, drinking problematically soon becomes a uh, like a almost like a full time job. It's like running. It, it's like running two parallel lives together and having to 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 merge them at at one point. It's the fact, you know, it's when, it's when, yeah, like when one is, when one is too many, it's, that's, that's the problem is that I, I can't have one drink because as soon as I, that first one touch, enters my body, then, because I, I'm never thinking, it, also not about the percentage, but like when I drunk, I didn't care about the drink that I was drinking. I was, my head was always thinking, where's the next one? You know, so I would drink, if I was could, if I was to drink sociably, whatever that it might be, because I don't know how to do it. It's the fact that if I would go to go to a pub to feel social, even though I was on my own, say I was to have a pint of Guinness, I would, order my second pint of Guinness once I had had drunk half of the pint. So I was never, I would never have an empty glass. I was always thinking about the next drink, you know, and, and, and when it was time to go home, is there alcohol at home? If not, why not? If not, how do I get them some, you know, and it, it, it just ruled my life. But the point that you've got to now, I think it's good for people to hear you because you can get there. 
but it is you can, you can get there and it, you know, always it, to, it, to people to reach out and you're always there to listen one, and there, there is always someone there that that will listen yeah 100 percent. There, there's help out there for 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 any with anyone struggling with any addiction not just alcohol because i suffer with the lot it's the fact that you know there is people to help and 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 i'm one of those people i will always try my best to help anyone that is suffering with addiction um you know because it's not it wasn't my, it, it wasn't my fault you know the stuff that i did was my fault but the reason that i got into that situation wasn't purely my fault and and you know at the end of the day i was just scared you know I'm, i was just a scared little boy in a man's body and i didn't know how to deal with real life you know and 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 i can still feel like that today you know over two and a half years clean sober you know i can still feel like that i can still feel scared you know but i know that everything's going to be all right today you know there's help out there for anyone and 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 you know my, my, i would be more than happy to help anyone i because the greatest gift that anyone has ever gave me is their time you know and so i'm more than happy to give that to anyone else well, I think that's a great place. I mean, we have to finish. Um, but and congratulations on two and a half years uh, sober and clean as well, because that is a, an amazing, amazing achievement. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to. Sorry, everybody. We're going to have to bring it to a close. We've definitely run over this time. Um, but thank you, um, Camille, so much for joining us. Thank you, Christian. Um, and, you know, thanks for being so honest and open. I'm sure that there will be people watching that will really, really appreciate appreciate that um and chris you made it through <laughs> you can you can go take some medicine now <laughs> thank you <laughs> um so next week uh, we're back again at the same time and we're with uh, chef james burton and uh, kate muddyman who's the work-based learning manager at college cambria which i always say wrong hopefully that's correct um but thank you all for for joining us and you know if there are any questions you want to ask i'm sure that both camille and christian if you reach out to them on social will be more than happy to chat to you so thank you thanks very much <laughs>